out is the first in a series called Pick a Toe, Pick a Heel, and it is a series of sock patterns and tutorials with different toe styles, different heel styles for toe-up socks. You can mix and match them and put them together any way that you like to make the socks that you want to make. And they are sized for men or women, any shoe size, average foot width. The needle size used is either 2.5 millimeter or 2.75 millimeter, whether you'd like a, a more narrow or a little bit looser sock. If you have an especially narrow foot, you can go all the way down to 2.25 millimeter, or if you'd like a much wider sock, you can go up to three millimeter. I haven't written these patterns for any particular needle type. So if you want to knit these on double pointed needles or short circulars, or flexible double points like flexi flips or magic loop it's up to you however you like to knit small diameter knitting and i'm going to put this as um, best if you have some sock knitting experience if you're brand new to sock knitting i'm going to recommend my um, german short row socks pattern where i use a little bit bigger needles thicker yarn and they knit up really quickly because bigger needles, thicker yarn, and that'll give you kind of a, a good starting point for working other techniques. I, I recommend working those first and then jumping into this and you can knit all the combinations and, and you'll be ready for it. Um, this is the first in a series and I hope to get a lot of these out pretty quickly so that you have some, some choices instead of just the ones I have here in this pattern. And once I have more than just this one video out, I will definitely link to the playlist of the series of all of the videos. Now I have some notes here, but I printed them out small. Um, oh, let's talk about this, these two patterns in particular. The round toe is just what it sounds like. It's a rounded toe and it's uh, normally in socks, you know, like most sock patterns have us kind of make a trapezoid looking toe. This one's round. And the heel flap, gusset heel flap combination is a good combination if you need a little more room when you're pulling on your socks. Like if, if you're pulling on your hand knit socks and you kind of get stuck on the heel, that is an indication that you need some more room between the back of the heel and the, the highest part of the instep. And this is a good pattern for that. And you know, that said, I'll say that all of the patterns that I'm putting into this series, four toes, four heels so far, they all fit me fine. So I'm not saying that you have to have, <laughs> need a little more room to use this kind. I mean, you just my foot, I guess, is just kind of normal because I can wear all of them. Um, but if you do find yourself struggling to pull on your socks, this is a good heel type for you. And the round toe and the heel gusset, those are typically knit cuff down. Those are styles that we encounter when we're knitting cuff down socks. I've re-engineered a lot of the patterns in this series to be worked toe up. And that's what all the patterns are, or toe up. Now let me see what else I have here. Usually I have notes and I print them out big so I can just glance down without glasses. Um, okay, if you are working from the pattern, um, in this whole series, the, I will link directly to the toe, directly to the heel, so you don't have to watch all of this and listen to me say all these things each time. And I'll also put a link directly to the toe, directly to the heel in the video description field below and on my website, just trying to make it easy for you. Um, and I think that's it. I, I'll, uh, in the tutorials coming up here with the, the toes and the heels, I'll give you a close-up look of each one to help you decide what combination you want to knit. And this, like I said, this is the first of the series. I've been working on this for a long time. I hope you enjoy knitting these socks. And next up, we have the round toe. Okay, we are ready to get started with the round toe. And like I said in um, the intro, this is typically a style of toe that's knit cuff down and I've re-engineered it. So we're gonna start with the pinhole cast on, which is really the hardest part of the whole pattern is the pinhole cast on. But we're gonna take it easy, slow, you'll see how it's done. First, let's get a look at this toe. Okay, we're gonna start out with a look at the sock and something I didn't mention in the intro, which is kind of important. If you want to get a copy of the pattern to follow along, you can click the little I in the upper right-hand corner, or I will also have a link in the video description field below to my website, and um, you can get this pattern there. And like I said, this is the first of the series, but there'll be more soon. So we're having a look at the round toe, which is what we're going to, going to do first here in the, um, in the tutorial 
and you'll see it is round. It's like how you would draw a cartoon picture of a sock. It's perfectly round and we have little kind of increase dots that you can see that I actually think look nice and kind of decorative with the with the self-striping yarn or in any yarn I'm sure. So we're going to start this um, we're going to start this one with uh, DPNs and the reason I'm going to use DPNs is because I really do think it's easiest but I give you the option of using whatever you like and the pinhole cast on let me get back to this we're starting with like almost no stitches here right we're starting at the very very tip of the sock so the pinhole cast on is necessary and like I said before the the beginning of the sock the cast on is the hardest part of the whole sock and when I do this cast on I like to put my working yarn over here on my left hand side and the tail end in my right so I get it wrapped around my fingers properly now I have a slow motion video on this cast on and I'll give you a link to that because really this does take a little bit of practice don't worry if you don't get it right the first time so I'm going to take oh the other thing I should mention is I'm using thicker yarn and bigger needles so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to wrap the yarn around my fingers like this with the tail end up here right and the working yarn coming from down here and I'll take a needle and there are a lot of movements to this so feel free to click over to the slow motion video I'm going to go under the, the um, strand there around between my two fingers and then grab that same strand from behind and up and don't move don't take your fingers out to tighten anything up I think that's the mistake some people make you've already cast on two now we're going to do this again down grab that between your two fingers grab that from the underside and up that's four six we're just casting on eight see it was tough but it goes pretty quickly and you'll know you've got it right you know you've got the pin hole cast on right you pull your fingers out of there if you pull on the tail end if everything tightens up you did it right if it doesn't then you got your tail end and your working yarn mixed up so I'm going to separate this to more DPNs and really I think it's probably best to do this on DPNs just for the first few rounds and then you can separate it. I am, my working yarns over here I've pushed them to the other end of the needle I'm going to put four on the first needle and then two on each of the other two needles. Okay, flip everything over. Now the way that I've arranged this is my first needle of the round has four stitches, so I know that's where I'm starting. This is my first stitch. I'm going to separate the tail end from the working yarn, and my working yarn should be coming from the last stitch on the last needle. And I'm just going to knit this round, and when I do knit this round, I'll be joining everything in the round. This is not the easiest round in the world to knit. But it's quick, it's only eight stitches. Now switch to the next needle. I know it's my next needle because my working yarn's coming from here and my next stitch is always to the left of the working yarn. to the next needle okay we just made things a lot easier by working that round because everything's joined there's a little bit going on it's not quite as wind chimey right 
So this round um, is KFB all the way around. We're going to double the number of stitches. KFB is knit front back. It's a one stitch increase. I'll give you a link to a slow motion video of this increase if it's new to you. But I'll also demonstrate it here. You knit the stitch normally, but you don't pull it off the left needle. You swing your right needle around to the back loop of that stitch, wrap it and pull it through, and you've just increased by one. And we're going to do this on every stitch. And this is, these instructions are the same for both the men's and women's size. I'm so into what I'm doing, I need to make sure that my hands are <laughs> on screen, right? Oh, these first few rounds are fiddly. But that's it, there's no provisional cast on or anything with this toe up. You get the hard part over with right away. And I'm gonna walk you through all of it. Okay, I wasn't counting stitches there because I didn't have to. Because I know I'm back at the beginning of the round because the first needle has so many stitches on it, right? And this round, I'm going to knit one KFB. So alternating a knit stitch with an increase. We're getting a lot more stitches now. I think after this one, we have 24 stitches after this round. So we went from eight to 24 very quickly. Okay, and the last one. At this point, there are enough stitches that if you were only using DPNs because I told you to, <laughs> you can switch to something else now. Um, there are enough stitches to do that. And you'll notice that the center hole uh, will open up while you're working, but if you pull on it, you see it tightens right back up. You definitely want to keep a row counter going while you're doing this because you're going to <clears throat> work these increase rounds and uh, with alternating, um, not alternating, but there's going to be a lot of plain knit rounds in there too, so the increases don't come too, too fast to give you a funny shape. So you can switch to other needles if you like or keep going on the double pointed needles. You'll follow the instructions, pay close attention to where the women's size stops and the men's size keeps going because the men uh, need more increases for a wider foot. Um, but that's it. This is, this is the hardest part of this, and this is all you're going to keep doing. Um, no more techniques. <laughs> so this, that's it for the round toe. And that's it for the techniques used in the toe. You're going to want to jump ahead now and look ahead to the heel style that you want to use because there will be instructions for how long to knit the foot before you start the heel. Different heels take different you want to leave different uh, uh, measurements for different heel types. So jump ahead to the type of heel you'd like to use, see how long you need to knit the foot. And next up in this tutorial, we're going to cover the gusset heel flap heel.
In this section, we're going to cover the techniques used in the gusset heel flap style of heel. And this is a good style of heel if you need a little extra room when you're pulling on your socks, if you find that your socks are getting caught up on your heel. Uh, the, the widest part of your foot is between the back of your heel and the highest part of your instep. And this sock style allows for a little extra room with that. Uh, heel flaps and gusset style socks are generally knit cuff down, but I've reworked everything to make this a toe up style. And first of all, let's take a look at the heel flap. Okay, let's take a look at this heel that we're talking about. There's a gusset heel and a heel flap going on with this one. And like I said in the introduction, this, this gusset gives you more space between here and here, which makes it a better fitting sock for a lot of people who have a hard time getting the sock up over their heel. So we have increases going on both sides, mirror, I can't get it flipped over, mirror image increases going on both sides of the sock. And then there is a heel turn. We kind of change direction here, knit a heel flap, and then you're done. We uh, just had the cuff to knit after that. So it's an interesting shape. The, I always say the feet are a weird thing to make clothes for. Weird thing to make clothes for. <laughs> so in this, I'm going to continue to use much uh, thicker yarn and bigger needles so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm right here at the beginning of the gusset increases. I'm working on flexible double points this time. Just to keep things interesting, I'm going to need a couple of stitch markers for this. Okay, I have measured my sock and I'm ready to start with my gusset increases. The first thing I'm going to do is very beginning of the round is to do a make one right. I'll pull up that bar between the two stitches and put the left needle in back to front and then knit that stitch through the front loop. And I will give you a link to my slow motion make one stitches if this is a new increase for you. This one's a make one right. I knit that. I'm going to place a marker. <clears throat> and then depending on the size you're knitting, you'll follow the instructions for the number of stitches to knit across the instep. And I've kept this one pretty small and it still ended up being a ginormous sock. Okay, after you knit that number, you will, uh, we wanna do a make one left this time. We're gonna pull up that bar between the two stitches. I'm splitting it, there we go. Put your needle in from, uh, front to back, and then knit that stitch through the back loop. Before I do, I want to get a stitch marker on there, and then knit that through the back loop. And the reason we knit one through the front loop and one through the back loop is to keep there from being a hole. Now really, that's it on gusset increases. That's the only technique I have to show you, because you're going to knit the rest of the way around, knit a plain knit round, do the make one increases again, knit a plain knit round. You'll follow your instructions for the number of times you're going to do that. And you will end up with, where's my next one? Something that looks like this. Now this time I'm on circular, uh, short circulars, because I know, I know I just want to keep it, uh, keep changing it up so that you can see how that these things look on the different needles. I have different markers going on here because this one's the beginning of my round. On the flexible double points, um, I had a clippy marker marking the beginning of my round because the beginning of my round is between the two needles. But when I'm on short circulars, I have to have a ring marker marking the beginning of the round. So there's the beginning of the round. Here is my first gusset marker. And you see I get a nice line of increases going up there. Here's my second gusset marker. Nice line of increases going up there. And um, that's, that's what it's going to look like when you're done. 
after you finish the gusset increases, it's time to turn the heel. And let's take a look at what that, well, let me look at this one. That's when we said the knitting changes direction. We wanna give this a nice rounded heel here and that's what this, this next bit's going to do. And I'm going to knit this my favorite way by switching to double pointed needles for this part. So I'm going to turn the heel on double pointed needles and just leave the rest of the stitches on the short circular. I know this is a lot. <laughs> I know this is a lot of needles. You do not have to switch to anything else. I slipped the first stitch and I'm going to knit across, just knit the number of stitches of course, the pattern tells you to. For your size. I don't know if you can hear the rain. We just start, we're getting thunderstorms today. You'll knit up to the number of stitches that you, for your size, turn the work. So we're actually working rows now, not rounds. The purl side is facing you. And we're going to do a German short row here. So I'll slip that stitch and my yarn's in front. I'm gonna pull up on the yarn and it gives me kind of a funny double stitch and then just, whoops, I'm gonna pull that around to the front because I'm purling. So I want to purl the wrong side rows. And you see it leaves me kind of this lumpy, funny double stitch there, right? That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. I wonder if the rain's coming through my microphone because it sounds nice. And the pattern, of course, tells you exactly how many to knit before you do the short row turns. And now I'm going to turn the work again so I have the right side facing me, and I'm going to work a German short row turn on the right side. I'm going to pull the yarn in front, slip that stitch, and pull up on it. Whoops, you know what? I did not want to pull the yarn in front. Slip. Yes, I did. Slip that stitch give it a tug and you'll get a funny double stitch and you just want to keep knitting. I'm going to show you this one more time. That one that I just did felt funny. I've done 8 million German short rows stitches in my life. <clears throat> My friend says it's pandemic brain. Okay, turn the work. Your working yarn's in front. You slip that stitch, you give it a tug, pull the yarn around to the front to work a purl. If you've knit German short row socks before, this will all be second nature to you because German short row socks use this kind of shaping. We're only using this for turning the heel, but German short row socks use it for the toe and the heel and you know the whole sock is done that way. Okay. Pull the yarn in front, slip that stitch, give it a tug. Yeah, that was right. Okay, now I just wanna talk about these funny double stitches we left because we are going to we're not going to treat them as two stitches. They are just one stitch. And when you're finished working the short rows, you're gonna work all the way across the row and not a short row, meaning we're not gonna turn it in the middle of everything. And when you encounter one of these funny double stitches, you're just gonna knit the, that whole thing together. And it's easy to see, you see that's kind of it doesn't look like a normal stitch. And the, the, the pattern tells you exactly when you're going to encounter them. Just knit it together. I 
I've given you an abbreviated version of the short row turns here just to show you the technique. But we do actually already have a little bit of a short row or of uh, turning the heel going here. You see that? It actually is a great way to shape. And then I'm going to purl across and purl these funny double stitches together the same way that I did with knitting. Okay, and the last part, I want to turn the pattern, turn the page of my pattern for this. The last part is the heel flap. And here I am back on double pointed needles. Let's get oriented here. This is the beginning of my round between these two needles. There's my first gusset marker, my second gusset marker, and I'm here on these back stitches because I just finished turning the heel, right? And there's my awesome heel turn. Now to work the gusset, I'm gonna stay on double pointed needles here. And I, I have another pattern that has a toe up gusset in it and I, I want to be sure to cover this part that was confusing to some people. You're going to slip and knit across the heel stitches that you just did. No, you're not, I'm sorry. <laughs> we want to do a slip stitch pattern. So you're gonna slip the first stitch, then knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. Gosh, I was so focused on the gusset increases. This gives you, um, let's take a look at it. This gives you a little bit of a thicker heel. The fabric's a little bit thicker there so that it will wear out less quickly. And also it looks cool. Slip one. Okay. I have one stitch left here and I have all of these gusset increases and the last part of my pattern tells me to knit two together. So what this is going to do, like the big picture here, is as we work this heel flap, as we work this distance at the back of the heel, we're going to eat up these gusset stitches that we increased. We want to decrease these back out. We're going to do it one at a time each row. So I want to knit two together with my last stitch from my heel stitches and the first stitch from the gusset increase. And if you remember, this spot right here is the beginning of my round. This has been the beginning of my round all along. But if I'm on circulars, I'm gonna take out that marker. And actually what I'm going to do, this is what I recommend doing because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Sorry, pain in the butt to keep reaching across to get this done, right? So I'm gonna slide these stitches over to this needle, all of the gusset stitches. and remove that marker. Now, I still have to do the knit two together, right? I'm gonna slide that stitch over there and knit two together. Okay, now I can turn the work and the purl side rows are just slip one, purl across. We're going to want to eat up the eat up the gusset stitches on this side of the foot also. So your pattern gives you exact numbers, but I'm essentially going to knit to this last stitch, and I'm going to slide all of these gusset increase stitches over to this needle. and remove the marker. I don't need that anymore. And purl two together. It's the last stitch of the heel and the first stitch of the gusset increases. And then I turn the work 
I'm going to slip that first stitch. And this time we're going to alternate. We did knit one, slip one. Now we're going to do slip one, knit one. And that's how we get that cool stitch pattern. And I'm going to show you this one more time. Oops, that was my last stitch. Okay, it's pretty obvious that that was my last stitch of the heel. I'm going to knit two together and turn the work. So each row, I will eliminate one of these stitches on the right side, eliminate one of these gusset stitches on the wrong side while I'm knitting the length of the heel flap. And that's really it, that's really it. If you I, I know that when I did this um, a toe up gusset sock tutorial before, the way that I moved the stitches was confusing to people. If what I did with moving the gusset stitches to this needle was confusing, just don't even do it. Just don't, just, you don't have to do it. You can just keep borrowing another stitch from um, the incept stitches as you need it, as you work the decrease on that row. So that's it. You're going to. Um, Finish back and forth on the heel flap. Let me show it to you this way. Finish back and forth on the heel flap, and when you're done, you'll begin knitting in the round again, and then it's easy Netflix knitting to knit the cuff. There are instructions for uh, working the rib top and then the bind off row. I like to use a simple stretchy bind off, and I will, of course, give you a link to that. There's a little bit of flare on this bind off. You see, this is another question I get all the time. Um, People are wondering, I, I want a stretchy bind off, but I don't like the ripples or the flare that's on the bind off. It looks like that when it's off your leg, but as soon as it's on your leg, it is smooth. Um, so it doesn't flare when it's actually on your leg. But that's it for the gusset heel flap. And those are the techniques used in the heel flap gusset. I haven't really thought of a <laughs> kicky name for this style of heel, but you know what I mean. You want to follow the pattern to continue knitting the cuff for as long as you'd like it. There are instructions in there for that and for uh, the uh, ribbing at the top and the bind off that I like to use. All of that is in your pattern. Um, really, if you want to make shorty socks at this point or longer socks at this point, it is up to you. The hard part of the knitting, all the shaping that you have to do is finished. So um, this is the um, end of the first two styles, toe and heel, in the series. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back because this is actually happening now. I've been working on it for a long time, and I hope to get more of these videos out very soon um, so that you have some choices. Um, you can make a choice for the toe and heel that you want to use. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the series. Good luck.